Abuja's skyline is dotted by dome mountains. From the outskirts, a picturized vista winds down the city center. Here, the scenic peaks give way to high-rise buildings sculpted by man. The engineering of Nigeria's capital city tells a story, one of massive investment in infrastructure and economic prosperity. But that story has changed. Abuja's urban development flourished on the backs of lower skilled workers. Laborers like Adams Utudo, a father of two, earned 2,000 naira daily. To make ends meet, he spends weeks at construction sites and travels to see his family on weekends. He rely on physical exertions and back-breaking labor to survive the now harsh economy. The skyrocketing cost of living has hit lower skilled workers hard. Most of us here, we come from a far distance. We come from a nearby uh, state here. Like some of us are from Niger, some of us are from uh, Nasrawa, some of us are from Kaduna, nearby this, nearby uh, area close to Abuja. So when the time comes like that, maybe on Saturday, you can just say, okay, after work, you know, it's, it's so close. And to be the traffic, like from here to Maraba on um, our massacre site that we are here, you just keep that until anything by cease. When we close work, you just say, okay, let's go. Because the transfer from here alone, we that are going to Maraba massacre site, they only the transfer from here, here alone to SSC, um, RCC, here is 1,000. Talk like from there down to massacre. So when I take the cost of the transport alone, how will you, if, if, even though you are earning, let's say that you are earning 50,000 Naira in a day. So it's better for we that we are even able to be in the site, then every week when you have the time, because you can, any how it is, you work from Monday to Saturday, at least you surely have something. And if you cannot go, you send some to your family, you see, save some in your account. Then from there, maybe where you see, you can play the transport of your going and what expenditure are going to the house to spend again. If you can be able to calculate everything, put it and bring out the estimate and say that, yes, let me go. At least I can spend this, I can give this to my family or manage and I can have some transport to come back and have some, at least, because we are coming to the site. You can eat in the morning. When you get to work in the afternoon, you can go and miss another person, maybe your engineer, and say, sir, now nothing do. I just go out and come back. I just need at least something from you. Maybe you can just wish you something of 500 or 1,000. Yeah, okay, plus, just hold this one. Go and take something that I want to eat. For that period of time. And that's how it is. In February 2024, Inflation in Nigeria rose to 31.7%, the highest in 28 years. With a steep increase in prices, many could no longer afford basic necessities. With decreased value for the Naira, the cost of building materials carocated. The price of one commodity in particular rose astronomically. Cement. A bag of cement that was sold for 3,000 Naira in November 2023 rose to 10,000 Naira. Now the price of cement ranges from 8,000 Naira to 10,000 Naira, despite efforts by the federal government to control the rising cost of building materials. The construction industry has been hit hard by inflation and economic decline. Like, like before, let me put it on percentage, like before, a, uh, when we have a normal price, people used to come as usual like 50%. But now when the price goes up, we sell like before. Yes, we sell, uh, like me, I sell like almost 95%. It's because of much construction and this, uh, the scarcity make people get in touch to some of, some of us like this. So because of the scarcity in many shops, many shops does not have cement in their store. So because of that, we the people that used to go to people that used to go to other shop, 
the, the now the right to our side. So the, I have a very good turn up. The sudden escalation in the price of cement has significantly disrupted construction timelines, particularly the lives of laborers depending on daily jobs to survive. Most laborers earn about 2,000 naira daily, less than $2 in most construction sites. When the jobs aren't handy, they could even end less. Unable to get regular jobs on construction sites, Adams faces the harsh reality of no longer being able to provide basic needs for his family. Everything is by that is now. You manage yourself. That is why if you earn like 2,000 and a cup of gari, you don't eat meat nowadays. You know, the, you cannot go to a, a, a place of say, a restaurant and say that, uh, give me food and give me rice, give me meat. If you can, even a rice now, you don't even eat rice again. The only thing now will eat, you just go and find gari. When you so gari, find plate, plate, download it on that part. Like, on that day, just drink water, just go and keep the rest. Because you cannot spend all. There's a school fees. I don't, but presently now, I know we like you, many children now they're out of school. And about the feeding. If you can maybe work for for a week, you can be able to keep like through three thousand, just say five five hundred naira in a week is three thousand. Then just say ah now make I just transfer this one to my family. Make them just my manager. So anyhow it be make life just go on bed. As I can see, the life is not easy in this country. The surge in price of commodities in the market has not only impacts Adams and his family, but also goes higher up the chain to contractors. The bags of cement, which used to be readily available for project managers, are now scarce. There's changes in terms of uh, the way things are in this country now, especially as you, you talk about the cement, um, the way we buy cement before, actually there's a lot of changes now, because normally, we normally buy cement at the rate of um, five, 4,000, like four, four, four months back ago, we buy like 4,000, five to 5,000 Naira bags. But now I'm telling you, back of cement is ranging from 8,000 to 9,000 Naira. And uh, as you're talking about uh, difficulties, yeah, the only difficulty we're having now, normally before we buy a cement, we order for a cement, um, maybe uh, in a week, we get a, a truck of, of, of cement, we, we'll be out of cement immediately. But right now, you order for a cement, it will take you like two, three weeks before the cement even come to the site. So that's what those are the problems that we're having now. It affects our running because it, normally our workers will pay them daily, so there is no way somebody will come to work and uh, there is no material on site that will do the work with. It affects us financially, even, even the work is not moving the way we want it because, because of the shortage of, of the material, especially the cement. Yes, I think um, cement is very important for building construction, production and um, as you can see, we have stacked over 35,000 uh, blocks here, but with an old stock that we got in December. So we bought it below 5,000 Naira. And as we speak, the price of cement has skyrocketed to 9,095. In other areas in Abuja here, you can even get it at the rate of 10,000 Naira. So, like you were saying, 7,000 and 8,000, that is directly from the industry. But if you are purchasing it from the retails, you will always get it at the rate of either 9,000 or 9,500. That's the most, the, uh, the least it can go. And uh, cement is very important. It's a very important ingredient of uh, a building construction material. Why? Because... Um, uh, if we, we are talking about people have made attempt to see if they can replace it. They have used some composite material. Others have also used uh, a thing like recycling material like uh, plastic to see if it can be compressed into block and then uh, to be used as uh, a block element. 
but uh, still you will be wondering if you have a kind of a large estate or a, you want to develop a very mass housing you will be wondering how much of plastic will you compress to be able to achieve that so of uh, cement is still of essence is still of important for some of this production but uh, we are wondering whether we will be able to continue because as that when we contracted uh, this housing project we were thinking cement will remain at that four something but as we speak it's over 9095 other areas 10000 so we don't know whether we can even be able to continue the impact transcends beyond individual stories the economic repercussion of inflation hits far and wide. The building block industry is not exempted. The major challenge here is the fluctuation commodity price. Without a stable price, customers have lost confidence in the market. Because when you go to buy the blocks, the cements today, they will say 9,000. Tomorrow, they will say 8,500. Honestly, it's affecting our business. We don't even know how to cope with our customers. Because you set a price with customer 500 today, tomorrow you will tell the customer the price is changed to 600 Naira. We don't know how to go about it. Honestly, it's affecting we the block mothers. Most of the project now, is most of people now, they are not even doing any work as from now. No business is moving, nothing, nothing. Please, government should help us. Please let them bring the price down. The block industry can no longer afford to produce the quantity of blocks they used to produce in the past. For laborers, this means less work, and less work means fewer wages. The Gaskia operation is not a good thing. The Gaskia operation is not a good thing. The Gaskia operation is not a good thing. Sakamakoy nyan ay inahaw hawa para si. E gas kaya ako da ako anan sa ito na mo. Akala baya de uti. Mang kay irong mata uku muna ay ki. Ama sakamakoy nyan ay inahaw hawa para si. Akala yaw kwa na mabida da wadag ay ki. Kuma mang kay sa tibi wa ma ay ki asait. Kaga muka mahakang yan akama na kuma ba. Dola wani loka si ma. Se munzo mun sa madan ta mo. Munye begin dinto. Kudang abanchin da da mo si ma. Se ito si gete ma kama na. E gaski amana zua ni muna timu baishi ukuru masa abanti Kupa gaski yaba Wanu luo kati maa nkati abanti Sede kalala ba kapakati ida mwetin kagudu Batara de aganka badu mwen ida nye ganka Babu shaka zee riki kani yetara ama jama adole si kabia shi kayanshi Du mwenka yansa ni It affects us a bit Because some of our smen we are bought when the price we are not high But the one we are buying now it's too high, that is what is affecting us. And even you look around, the laborers are not like before because of the increase of the building materials in the market. Normally, before the increase, we, we, we are producing 500 up to 600 daily blocks here, very strong blocks. Before, because of the increase of the price, we don't know. Uh, of the price of the goods in the market, we don't more produce like that. That is what is affecting us here in the site. The battle contractors face when the price of essential building materials, especially cement carocades, send shockwaves through the construction industry. The lack of funds to finance projects on most occasions leads to delay in construction or even worse projects being abandoned. During uh, the first week of January, we bought one bag of cement for 4,900 Naira. And a uh, few weeks down the line, you're buying the same product for almost 10,000 Naira. Now, you must have done your quotations, you must have done your uh, bill of quantity, uh, you must have given clients uh, your, your selling price, for example, we had just signed an MOU with Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security to do a housing project for their staff. And uh, at agreed prices contained in the MOU. And the change of uh, price of building materials now 
it's quadrupled. So what do you do? It therefore means more money going into building a bungalow or any house type you can think of. And in the end, the brunt, the cost, is borne by the, the client. So it impacts the cost of uh, the building itself. It impacts the cost of doing infrastructure within the estate. So if you are to go by today's current inflation rate and the way prices of goods and services are changing in the market in, uh, in this country today, it therefore means that for a house you are selling for 25 million, you should be selling that house now for 50 million or above. So you can see the difference. Overnight, there is almost a uh, 100% increase. And it keeps going on and on like that. So uh, at the end of the day, it's impacting on the client. But the question now is, for the client, uh, most especially in a city like Abuja, where most of our clients are civil servants, there hasn't been any increase in uh, their salaries. So what do you do? So it's a terrible, it's a terrible situation we find ourselves in. Investigating the root causes, experts weigh in on the economic dynamics at play, pointing at supply chain disruptions and increased production cost. Cement production requires a particular element called the clinker. The clinker is essentially limestone and clay, and it makes up about 65% of a bag of cement. Now, this is not to say that we don't have clinkers in Nigeria. We're able to produce clinker in Nigeria. So we produce about 60 million tons. And remember, the installed capacity for cement is about 60 million tons and 65% of a bag of cement is made up of clinker. So this shortfall is imported. And once you're importing that bit, then it will be affected by the exchange rates. And if you recall, over the last 120 days, um, we have been seeing the Naira fall against the dollar. Um, happily, it's stabilized in the past two, three weeks. Okay, but it has been falling against the dollar and that price increase or the exchange rates um, has affected imports. Um, and what you've had is those pricing have considered what replacement costs will be if they need to import clinker down the line because I'm sure they don't import it as needed. They import stock and they use up the stock, but they've got to be able to make enough money to import another stock. Um, Bear in mind also that um, Nigeria's demand for cement is just about 22 million tons. So we've got more in production than we actually need. Um, the excess is exported to Niger Republic, Togo and Cameroon um, and, and those places, you know, buy, buy up whatever cement we need. But there's something else that has started happening in Nigeria and it is that cement is now being used in building roads because um, some roads are now being uh, built with concrete rather than tar and bitumen and that's brought another increase so you can imagine the number of bags or the tons of cement that that will go into the stretch of a hundred kilometer road for instance um, that should take up much of the excess but Again, as the demand goes and cement is pushed out there, there is a need to produce more and therefore to import more clinker. And if a key raw material that takes up 65% of a bag of cement is, is increasing in terms of its price, it's inevitable that the price will increase. On the 20th of February, 2024, Nigeria's Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Ahmed Dengiwa, threatens cement and building materials manufacturers that the government will allow massive importation if prices are not controlled. But this warning has had no impact on the rising cost. Some industry experts called for an open market policy to allow competition and free flow of products. There was a time in this country where 
who are importing cement. And uh, when Dangote and other indigenous cement companies came on board, we were all happy that these are indigenous uh, firms and that they are coming into the sector was going to help reduce the price of uh, building material, uh, the price of cement. But that is not what we have seen. We have seen a situation where while the government has stopped the importation of uh, cement to allow the indigenous companies to grow and to take advantage of the market. Now, the indigenous companies themselves have now, have now monopolized the market. So they wake up and they can determine the price uh, to any level which they want. So it's, 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 it's a bad situation. So for me, I think the way forward is that uh, government should remove the uh, restriction on cement importation. One million and one people can import cement into Nigeria while the indigenous companies also produce. So let the market forces at that level now determine the true price of cement and other uh, building materials. But in a situation where the borders are close to this product and the indigenous companies are not helping us, I think it's, it's, it's not healthy, it's not good. I, let me just add here that Nigeria actually does import just a little bit of cement. In the whole of 2021, about $3.8 million worth of cement was imported. And we can just imagine how small that is. So maybe it served a niche market, I expect. I do not have the details, but it's so tiny compared to what we're producing and the fact that we're producing in excess of local demand that whoever is importing and whatever they're importing it for must be niche um, but so when you think about that and you think of what countries are we actually importing cement from um, where we're importing the cement we're using from from germany from china india egypt and the uae um, and interestingly enough, the clinker that is imported, which is significant actually because of its in, uh, being a raw material to cement production, is coming in also from China, from India, from Egypt, and then from Turkey too. So we all witnessed the exchange rate coming down from almost 1,900 naira to the dollar to about 1,005. Um, their projections, it's about slightly below 1,005 now. Uh, there was an article from Bloomberg earlier this morning I saw saying they're projecting 1,200. Um, I know the central bank itself has a plan and it's targeting its own particular rate, which is even lower than 1,200. Um, so there will be stability, but for prices to go back to what they were before, that is not likely. Now, increase, increases in prices will always affect um, disposable income. And that's why you have that negotiation going on right now about increasing the minimum wage. Um, but it's got to be done carefully because a sudden push of money out there would lead to inflation in its own way and that's demand pull suddenly people can afford it so they're buying it right now um it's it, it's more of an individual solution i think we're at a time where people have to be mindful as to their spending needs they have to focus on their needs and not just on their wants um the situation isn't gonna last um, and it's not going to last, like I said earlier, not because prices will come down, but because there will be an adjustment and then there will be a balance and suddenly things will be affordable again. Government policies play a pivotal role in shaping the construction landscape. As contractors brave soaring prices of cement and other building materials, laborers, builders and local businesses alike are feeling the heat. The ripple effect of the dynamics in the construction industry transcends beyond key players. Just as the skyline of developed cities are symbolic of a prosperous economy, so also is the death in construction 
a marker for economic decline. 